Last year, the Grand Clio Award went to this commercial for milk. Mm -hmm. Hello for $10,000. Mm -hmm. Who will win the Grand Clio for 1995? Will it be Hootie and the Bolsheviks? That Yuri, don't smush back in. A stressed flight attendant. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be leaving you now. The world's worst bridge builder. Sorry. The most famous quarterback never to play the game. I had a great team for every game. The Monkees, the latest Baywatch star. The parakeet Pele. The frog formerly known as Prince. Swine. Or will it be award-winning actor Dennis Hopper? Cute you, baby. Supermodel Cindy Crawford. Or Seinfeld's Jason Alexander. Must be the Prince. Find out now at the 1995 Clio Awards. Hosted by Josie Bissett and John Cryer. From Frasier, Eddie. Comedian Paula Poundstone. Recording artist, Lou Paul. And from Fox NFL Sunday, National Sportscaster of the Year, James Brown. Four-time Super Bowl champion and Hall of Fame quarterback, Terry Bradshaw. Eight-time Pro Bowl defensive lineman, Howie Long. And two-time Super Bowl winning coach, Jimmy Johnson. Please welcome your host for this evening, Melrose Place's Josie Bissett, and from Partners, John Cryer. Welcome to the 1995 Clio Awards. This is a show that honors distinctive achievement in advertising. Now tonight, Josie and I will take you on a tour of the finest work in television advertising during the past year. Over the last 36 years, the Clios have been the most valued and widely recognized honor that can be awarded a commercial. They are the Oscars of advertising, but without the silly, embarrassing dance numbers. Good analogy. Well, thank you. I actually uh, know a little more about this subject than you think. Now, we could stand here and bore you with a lot of facts about how much is spent on advertising. In the United States alone, $150 billion each year. Or how many advertisements we see in a day. On average, about 245 each day. But we wouldn't do that. No. Um, all that really matters tonight is that the Clio winners are all extraordinary commercials. Like this one. That commercial came from Chile, one of 55 countries that entered ads in the Clio competition. There are also 50 categories for television commercials. Now, since the judges award Clios to commercials of exceptional quality, there may be more than one Clio winner in each category. See how much I know? Mm-hmm. Ah. Of those chosen, the truly superlative efforts are accorded the gold Clio. And from all the winners, one commercial is singled out as the best of show and awarded the Grand Clio. You following this? It's kind of like the best cow at the county fair. And speaking of cows, last year's Grand Clio winner was for milk, a product that falls into the soft drink category called non-alcoholic beverages, a category that annually delivers some of the most amusing advertising. <laughs> Drink up. Milk. Help yourself. To see if there's a difference between Pepsi and Coke, we're delving into their submolecular structures to discover the very essence of what they're made of. First, the Coke.
And now, the Pepsi. Just as we expected. There's absolutely no difference. Could this be? The choice of a new generation. Is it long? Yes, my dear. Is it long that draws me near? Is it long that brings me back into your Now, in the past, we've seen Coca-Cola and Pepsi take each other on in these so-called cola wars of advertising. Uh, but this gold Clio winner may be the first time we've seen them together in a, in a kinder, gentler milieu. Here Thanks, Kelly. Here's coal. Woo! What can I get you? Ah, blueberry pie and uh, Pepsi. Got it. Yes. Thanks. Good song. Great song. It should come as no surprise that some of the most memorable commercials use humor. So, to present the winners, here is one of the most engaging comedians today, Paula Poundstone. Thank you very much. You know, I'm not in one of the commercials on tonight. And let me tell you the reason for that. I turned them all down, ladies and gentlemen. That is correct. <laughs> they begged me. You know, I don't know about you guys, but as a consumer, if something makes me laugh in terms of a commercial, I do tend to remember the product. Does that make me sort of a boneheaded consumer? Perhaps, yes. <laughs> but that's how I... No, let me just... I, we could stand here and talk about, you know, comedy and humor and commercials and what sells, but I think a better idea... I stopped off at a mini market on my way here tonight to buy a snack food, and I was thinking while I was in there, like, this is, this is it. This is what we're talking about here on this auspicious evening. There's a camera. What are you, what are you shooting? What, what are you, what's your camera pointing at? It's not me because you're standing a foot behind me. You're, you're shooting the television? Is it, is it, is, hey, is it okay if we just go to that mini market? And I, this guy, since he's obviously not doing anything with his time and talent. <laughs> Why don't, why don't you just come, come with me? They have a, uh, okay, we're gonna go and, uh, well, they'll put me up on that satellite thing and, and I'll be at a mini market representing you, the consumer. Come right this way. I'll be back in a little while. Get me a Slurpee and a burrito while you're out there. Will you? Sometimes the best way to deal with an impending disaster is a sense of humor. Which is why, quite often, insurance companies have some of the wittiest commercials. Like this one, which won a gold Clio.
award-winning commercials that feature celebrities and animals when the 1995 Clio Awards return. Well, the Clios don't have a category for best commercial starring animals, but maybe they should, because some of the most memorable ads ever made have featured animals. Uh, there was the Qantas Airlines koala bear, the gorilla baggage handler in the American Tourister spot, and, of course, Morris the cat. <laughs> Morris the cat. I mean, he had that, that soft, rusty brown fur, those cute little green eyes. Oh, remember the way he used to, you know, tilt his head when he heard his name? You know, Morris, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I, I hear he's dead now. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm sorry. Um, I have a cat, see? So, uh, so now, even though there's not an official category, we've drawn together the best of those ads featuring animals from various categories. To help me introduce them, please welcome the star of Frasier. So it's, it's really great having you on the show. I'm really kind of nervous. <laughs> uh, I really, really love you on, on Frasier. You, you're great, you know? Uh, uh, you know what I really loved? I, um, I really loved that, that episode, you know, where, where you, just, you just stared at him. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Um, well, you're here to help present some of the Clio winners, which star animals. And uh, as usual, we, we give them human qualities, you know, and even portray them as being smarter than us. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> <gasps> Look! What oh, my gosh! It's a little chimp! Oh, he looks like a little person! They're really not. Look how smart he is! They're not very intelligent, honey. They're dopey. Look at them! We have a dummy on our hood. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And now, Valley of the Apes. You can lead a man to water. But hey, why settle for water? Now let's see which commercials that beat. <laughs> now let's see which commercials that featured animals were awarded gold Cleos. Good. Mamma mia, where did I put my cigarettes? Porco Madonna! I found your cigarettes in the kitchen. By the way, tell me if you see my guinea pig. Look, Eddie, I'm, I'm sorry, okay? You know, I, I didn't know the guinea pig was a friend of yours. Eddie, don't... Now, don't go... Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Josie Bissett.
If I name a celebrity, can you name the product they were in a commercial for? Sure, absolutely. Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, American Express. Dan Marino. Ice Atona Gloves. Michael Jordan. Oh, uh, McDonald's, Nike, Hanes, Gatorade, Ballpark Franks, uh, The Club, The Clapper. Uh, how much time do we have? John Cryer. I am an actor. Oh, I, am, I am a classically trained thespian. I, I, could I get a little mood lighting here, please? Please? <laughs> attended the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in London. I mean, I have acted on the stage of London's hallowed Old Vic Theater. What talent I possess is a gift from a higher power, something to be treasured, nurtured, and shared with an appreciative audience, not squandered. No offers yet, huh? No, not a call. No, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, here are some celebrities who have gotten a call. No, goalie, this hockey team's in trouble. You with the pretzels, get in there. Good thing these new rolled gold pretzels are fat free. Unbelievable! <laughs> must be the pretzels. It must be the pretzels! Yes! Are you okay? Hang on. A legend in the making! For great taste that's fat free, it must be rolled gold. Um, dear diary, dear diary. I've never been on a blind date before. I've never had a blind date. Actually, I've never been on a date. Oh, man. How did I get into this? How can I get out of this? Hi. Hey. This is totally wrong. You like nachos? No. One enormous pair of glasses. That's all she'll say. Enormous pair of glasses. Ugh. Braces forever. Ever. That's all she'll say. That's all he'll say. I hope he's not a geek. I look like a geek. Help. I need help. Big help. This is this never, is never gonna, work. gonna work. Never gonna work. Who took home the Clio? I don't know whether they won it, but they certainly took it home. We're here to test the safety features of the Eagle Vision along with insurance underwriter Donald... Duncan. Donald Duncan. Donald Duncan. As a matter of fact, here at the Chrysler Test Track, he's going to do a loop-to-loop -loop through the wall of flames, which... Oh, I'm just kidding with you. Come on now. We're back with Don, our favorite insurance underwriter. Did you notice any lock brakes? Yes. Dual airbag? Yes. Seems to me with all those safety features, insurance rates could actually drop. <laughs> Thanks, Don. Duncan. Donald Duncan. 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 That's Duncan. I am here to see Sterling Sharp, please. Name, please. Name. Hey! Now let me tell you a little about Sterling before we meet him. He's a strong man, man. Sterling's like a freight train with stick him. <laughs> Sterling, remember me? I work with you, right? <laughs> Amen. Like a freight train, man. Choo-choo. Choo-choo. The 1995 Clio Awards will return with Paula Poundstone and the year's funniest commercial. If you're just joining us, Paula Poundstone was here earlier to present the Clios for humor and advertising. Well, she went on a little field assignment, but she's here with us now via satellite. Paula, are you there? Josie, John, are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're here. Hey, it's me. <laughs> Is the audience still there? Uh-huh. Uh, no, they left. It's so good. I, I hate it when I leave and the audience sneaks away and then I'm talking and there's nobody there. That can be so humiliating for the performer, <laughs> particularly when you're in charge of the whole humor commercial category which is a tremendous pressure. I've come to a, a haven of consumerism. Uh, I, I'm not allowed, for reasons of standards and practices with the networks, I'm not allowed to say which store I'm at. I'll tell you, it's open all night, and it's hyphenated. It's up to you. <laughs> there are some numbers involved. Uh, I, I just want to 
prove a point. I just wanted to say to you that this, you see, I find that if, uh, if a commercial has used humor in their advertising, I tend to remember the product better. Uh, okay, just for example, now I can't show you the actual products, but okay. Uh, okay, here's one that has claimed to be, it's, okay, it's a sandwich cookie. I can tell you that much. <laughs> there's creamy filling, there's a chocolate outer coating. Beyond that, it's none of your business. <laughs> it has claimed to be, at one point, the official snack food of the Olympic athletes, uh, which I think if you watch the Olympics carefully, you will say a guy just chow down on a couple of candy bars and cookies before they run. <laughs> That's typical. I don't know why they didn't have me do the sports tonight. Anyways. Uh, so this one, they say, well, but to me, that's, that's a too dramatic ad. Maybe encouraging on one level, probably a fine cookie. This cookie, which I cannot show you, I buy because they used to have a commercial where there was a guy dressed as a big, huge chocolate chip, and he kept pushing kids down. To me, that's a memorable commercial, and it makes for a tasty cookie-eating experience. Now, in throughout this convenience market that I'm at tonight, there's all sorts of products that probably... Just come right this way, Mr. Cameraman. That probably aren't selling, I think, because the ads were too serious. They're products that certainly deserve to be flying off the shelf. Uh, okay, here... Perfect example, the kind of thing you run in and buy in the middle of the night. Uh, it's a combination gas, can, and school lunchbox thermos. No reason in the world this shouldn't have sold. Tons of these should be going. Uh, okay, here's one. Here's one. The, now, I've never actually seen a beef jerky ad, but I can tell you this. If I were going to buy a beef jerky product, this one here, perfectly reputable, I would never buy it because it's just not funny. To me, this one here's got a cowboy on the front of it who is convulsed with laughter. Wait a minute, no, he's choking. Okay, that was a bad example. That was a very, very bad example right there. Now, let me just show you um, some clips of commercials that will make this point a little bit better. There's a place where lovers go To cry the trouble problem it's uh, the money not the food the money I have uh, not enough money on me so I have to go to the hotel to get money for you so I can pay can I do that I would say you are not very cooperative now that's not the way we do business in Sweden we say to each other I have not uh, enough money they say okay I'll read up the bukrita or whatever uh, uh, come on here you can trust me I'm Swedish now let's look at a couple of the Golden Clio winners. I love these four-hour flights. Just me and my... Where's my computer? You checked it. Ooh, I checked my notebook. Mm -hmm. I checked my notebook. <laughs> I checked my notebook. I checked my notebook. That's the plane. I checked my notebook. Check the notebook. Check it. Check my notebook. My notebook. Gone. I can't believe I checked my notebook. <laughs> Stop the play! Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be leaving you now. I checked my notebook. I can't believe it. I checked my notebook. Anybody? Notebook? I checked it. Have you seen my notebook? Mistakes can happen. Don't let the notebook computer you choose be one of them. It's alive! It's alive! I love you! I checked my notebook. Toshiba. Tough enough for today's world. distinction when a commercial wins a Clio, but when one single ad is honored in several categories, it certainly deserves special mention. This next commercial was honored in four categories this year and won two gold Clios. It comes from a company known for their clever, funny, and imaginative commercials, Little Caesar's Pizza. 
And this time they came up with a commercial that speaks to just about everybody. <clears throat> Who'd like more cheese on their pizza? Okay. Who'd like more toppings on their pizza? Okay. More cheese? Okay. Toppings? More? More? That's every man, woman, and child. Caesar's Pleasers menu. More meat, more cheese, more pepperoni, more toppings. Any two for $9.98, product guaranteed. Pizza, pizza. Or get one pizza for $5.99. Pizza. All television stations in this country are required to air a certain number of PSAs, or public service announcements. Now, since PSAs are often produced on a shoestring by not-for-profit organizations, the Clios reward the winning efforts with a cash donation. This gold winner is a perfect example of how a complex social argument can be conveyed with simple execution. NFL Sunday team will present the top sports commercial when we return. Welcome to the Cleo's Halftime Report with Terry Bradshaw, Howie Long, and Jimmy Johnson. I'm James Brown. Well, three Cleo's for Pepsi and four for Little Caesars Pizza. I'd say a pretty big first half with that great American team of pizza and cola. And Jimmy, as a former coach of that other great American team, the Dallas Cowboys, you got to agree, a big first half. Yeah, J.B., and the commercial that really hit home with me was that Pepsi one where the man kept inserting the dollar bill into the vending machine. As a coach, I'm known a little frustration. Well, I'll tell you what, Jimmy, I'm a defensive man, and I've always been a big fan of ice hockey, so my vote goes to Jason Alexander as the game's greatest goaltender. And it was a really nice, authentic touch having the tagline said by a foreign hockey player. Must be the pretzels. Arnold, Arnold. Ooh, hey, that was Russian. Yeah, hey, that's good. Yeah. That was Russian. Did you pick that up? <laughs> you know, but I'm in and out of character. We're, we're all, I know you are, but we're, we're football fans here, right? We do this show. So. We're big football fans, so how could we not pick Dennis Hopper's little portrayal of what? That deranged fan running into the Green Bay Packers practice field, trying to sneak in and watch their practice. Pretty good moves he put on that security guard, wouldn't you think? Kind of like a... Choo-choo train, baby. You know, choo-choo. Choo-choo. I like it. I like choo -choo. it. Choo-choo. <laughs> Talk about being a character. character. <laughs> that, would you, can you imagine that happening at, at, at our practice facilities in Pittsburgh with Chuck? No. No, no way. No. TB, you know what? My personal picture would be, certainly would have to be the Sprite Spot featuring the camels, if only because I've always wanted to say the word dromedary on television. Dromedary. Okay, yes indeed, dromedary. Okay, during this Clio's halftime report, we're going to introduce some more Clio winning commercials, but ones that use sports to get their message across. looking for parodies who love soccer, who enjoy the show, who feel our colors, who get excited, and above all, who want to fly with us. We are going to play soccer. Don't miss it. Espanol de Barcelona, the parakeets. Join the club. Call now. At Super Bowl One. A little-known quarterback named Elmer Brooker was on the sidelines for the Green Bay Packers. He did not play. Nine years later with the Steelers, he was slated to start, but was injured during the coin toss. And where was he when they wanted to send him in Super Bowl XXI? Searching for his lost contact lens. Although he's never played, 
Elmer Bruker was a member of every winning Super Bowl team until he retired last year from the world champion Cowboys. I look at it this way, I had a, I had a great seat for every game. To Elmer and armchair quarterbacks everywhere, Miller Lite says thanks for letting us play a part in the Super Bowl. It feels weird not being there. Tell me about it. TB, what are you thinking? Oh. Man, I want, I want to get me one of those birds. Can you imagine you get you some parakeets? You see that thing, Kit Kat ball? That's over. <laughs> that is pretty <laughs> right. Yes, sir. Man. These people don't know you're kidding. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I, want, I, want to... <laughs> I think that's pretty neat. And I'm another thing. I mean, where does Jimmy Johnson oh. come up? He, he's sneaking up with us bogus quarterback spot. Elmer. Bruker, Brucker, I mean, good God almighty, what kind of stupid name is that for a quarterback? And boy, were you great at the end of that. Well, I'll tell you what, Jimmy, for once I got to agree with the old Steeler kingpin here. We were blindsided by Jimmy on that play. Never saw it coming, a perfect quarterback sneak. No doubt about it, Jimmy, you were great in that commercial, but to be truthful, you were in it for only a few seconds, and that was near the very end. JB, even though you may only be called upon to do one play in an entire game, if it's the right call, it can be the difference between winning and losing. In my case, it meant winning. And I'll certainly agree with that. Well, Jimmy, your commercial and the others were all Clio like winners, but the top sports winner this year was this Nike soccer commercial, which won an amazing three gold Clios. Pretty impressive commercial indeed. Well, that's all from this Cleo's halftime report, but still to come, the inductees into the Cleo's Hall of Fame, the top campaigns, the year's sexiest commercials, and of course, the best of show. For Terry Bradshaw, Howie Long, and Jimmy Johnson, I'm James Brown saying thanks for watching, and after a short break, you'll be rejoining your hosts, Josie Bissett and John Cryer, for the second half of the 1995 Cleo Awards. predominantly awarded to individual commercials, they also honor entire campaigns. Let's take a look at one of the winning national campaigns. I am bored today. I am filled with boredom. The bourgeois businessmen waiting for their packages. They can wait. Does your shipping company hire someone else to deliver your package overseas? Why take the chance? Especially when there's a company that uses its own delivery people in more countries around the world. DHL, or else. I am international shipping guy. I deliver packages from America. It's a good job. Get to use truck for rock and roll band. Hey, Yuri, don't switch package. Why are you kidding me? Does your shipping company hire someone else to deliver your package overseas? Why take the chance? Especially when there's a company that uses its own delivery people in more countries around the world. DHL. All right. My name is Sanchez, and I'm the best bullfighter in Spain. Well, not yet. For now, I deliver packages. But soon, the ladies will know the name Sanchez. Hmm? Uh oh. Does your shipping company hire someone else to deliver your package overseas? Why take the chance? Especially when there's a company that uses its own delivery people in more countries around the world. DHL, all right. In addition to the national scene, local and regional campaigns are also recognized by the Clios. And here's a tasty sample from each of those clever campaigns. It's hard to surprise people during the holidays.
So shop at Staples and give them something different, like a laser printer, electronic organizer, or cordless phone. Over 5,000 gift ideas at a guaranteed low price. Staples. Yeah, we've got that. The statement doesn't match my balance. I want to come down and talk to someone in person. You'll be right down. Yeah. Most banks are happier to see your money than they are to see you. So come to a bank where you're appreciated. Glendale <laughs> Federal. You have a little bank. Sexy commercials. They flirt with us, sometimes with subtle sensuality, other times with raw sexual appeal. Our next presenter can certainly help you pick out a nice pair of pumps. Oh, good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to peer through the steamy windows of sex and advertising, the always ambiguous RuPaul. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this just in. Sex still sells. Now, is there anyone in the world who doesn't already know this? I mean, think of all those sexy slogans. Take it off. Take it all off. All my men wear English leather or they wear nothing at all. My baloney has a first name. It's... Well, you get the idea. Now, believe it or not, I've never done any commercials. But it's still possible. I mean, stranger things have happened. I could see myself selling pantyhose or, or sneakers or, or even deodorant. Something like, super duper secret. <laughs> Strong enough for a man who looks like a woman. <laughs> All over the world, sex can still be counted on to push any product. But you know, the sexiest commercials still come from outside the United States. and John Cryer return with the 1995 Clio Awards. Every year, the Clio organization inducts classic commercials into its Hall of Fame. To be eligible for this honor, a commercial must be at least five years old and be a past Clio winner. Now, this year's first inductee is one of the most famous commercials of all time. It was directed by Ridley Scott, known for his feature films Alien, Blade Runner, and Thelma and Louise. And what makes this particular advertisement even more remarkable is that it aired only one time in the United States. That was during the Super Bowl of 1984, a year with a very ominous ring to it. In 
1953, the legendary Phil Spector produced the Ronettes' Be My Baby hit record, which was written by Phil Spector, Jeff Barry, and Ellie Greenwich. Now, in 1988, it was used as the soundtrack for this next commercial, which takes its rightful place in the Clio Hall of Fame. Every year, the CEO judges look for the one ad whose innovative brilliance and effectiveness in selling its product make it rise above all others. For its efforts, that commercial is heralded as the Grand Clio winner. And this year's honoree cleverly uses one of the most dramatic scenes ever captured on film. The result, a uniquely eye-catching and effective commercial. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we congratulate all the winners of this year's Clio Awards. Imagine, John, what we've seen tonight is only a small percentage of the total number of Clio recipients and doesn't even include the well-deserving winners from the print and radio media. Now we want to thank you for watching and don't forget the next commercial you see could be a Clio winner next year. Especially if it stars me. <laughs> Say good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Continental Airlines, now among the best in the business at getting you to your destination on time.